Praise be Jesus Christ. There has been a number of campaigns that have been launched in the last couple of days. People who are calling Catholics, faithful Catholics, to put some respectful pressure on the leadership of the church to give us answers about ex-Cardinal McCarrick. Um, Bishop Barron, in his book, Letter to a Suffering Church, he wrote, It seems numerous bishops, archbishops, and cardinals, both in this country and in the Vatican, knew all about McCarrick's outrageous behavior and did nothing in response to it. Or rather, worse, they continued to advance him up the ecclesiastical ladder, from auxiliary bishop to bishop of a diocese to archbishop and finally to cardinal. Even after he resigned from his post in Washington, D.C., McCarrick continued to be a roving ambassador for the church and a kingmaker in the American hierarchy. He goes on to say, the average Catholic in America could certainly be forgiven for thinking that something like a conspiracy of silence and a deep corruption obtain within the institutional life of the church. He also says, um, this time in history, in history it says, it, he says, it certainly constitutes the darkest moment in the history of the church in the United States. And that's why it's so important, again, for, for faithful Catholics, you gotta do something. He goes on to say in his book, um, in his letter, I believe that another essential move, if the church is serious about preventing McCarrick-like situations going forward, is to launch a formal investigation, both on this side of the Atlantic and in Rome, to determine how someone like Theodore McCarrick, whose serious misbehavior was well known, could possibly have risen so high in the government of the church. And then finally from Bishop Barron, Bishop says, fight by raising your voice in protest. Fight by writing a letter of complaint. Fight by insisting that protocols, protocols be followed. Fight by reporting offenders. Fight by pursuing the guilty until they are punished. Fight by refusing to be mollified by pathetic excuses. But above all, fight by your holiness of life by becoming the saint that God wants you to be. Now, I'm, I'm adding three little uh, clips that, again, show how leaders in the church have been insisting that there be a full reckoning of the, the, the whole McCarrick scandal. I have a clip from uh, Bishop Strickland, our wonderful Bishop Strickland from Tyler, Texas, um, and that, that was from the uh, Spring General Assembly. And then I have a clip from uh, Colonel Anita Reynas, um, retired um, Colonel. She was the chairwoman of the National Advisory Council. And then finally a clip from uh, and Anita Reynas, that was also from the Spring General Assembly of the USCCB. And then finally, I have a clip from 2018, the Fall General Assembly. I just want to remind us what we all know, but we have been blessed with two great bodies of a lay advisory, the NAC and the National Review Board. They've both spoken to us powerfully this week and reiterated once again a desire that a, a full reckoning of the McCarrick scandal be offered. Um, I've been assured that uh, the Holy See is working on that. I would just encourage uh, the executive committee of the USCCB and anyone else who has information to work with those two lay bodies, those lay advisory groups that are already there, excellent people. They've already proven a, a deep commitment to the church and excellent advice they've given. I would encourage that we pursue their strong recommendation. The NAC unanimously requests that the U.S. bishops exhort the Holy See to make public the results of the archdiocesan and diocesan investigations of Theodore McCarrick. The crisis really begins with the revelations about Archbishop McCarrick and as I listen to uh, the people of God this is a still a major concern for them that we get to the bottom of how he was able to rise so high in the hierarchy 
how we continue to have such a uh, disproportionate influence, it seems, in the life of the church, even after retirement. I know, uh, Cardinal DiNardo, you called last summer for that investigation. I strongly supported that. Um, after some resistance, it seems, from the Holy See in October, we got the indication that they were very open to opening up the files, et cetera. I'm just curious, first of all, the status of that. It seems to me, unless someone is appointed to do the investigation, it remains just a kind of velleity. And I'm wondering if we can bring any sort of you know, respectful pressure to bear to say we really want this to be um, uh, launched. Because it seems to me, until we get at that, we're, we're, it's not the whole story, but it's an important part of the story. And I think our people are calling for some clarity on that. So just curious about the status of it and then what pressure maybe we can bring as a conference to make sure that work gets done. So what I'm calling for is for all faithful Catholics who love the church and who are concerned about the salvation of souls to get behind people like Bishop Strickland, Colonel Anitas Reynas, um, Bishop Barron, and to join these campaigns that are calling Catholics to put respectful pressure on the leadership of the church to give us a full reckoning of the McCarrick scandal. We need to do this. We need to do, do this now. Please, if everyone would simply do one thing, I believe that we could overpower the lions that are trying to destroy the vulnerable in our church. Remember, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Viva Cristo Rey!